welcome to Author to Author. I am your host Jasveer and my guest today is Cory Jobson, all the way from Jamaica. Uh, Cory, welcome to the podcast. Thank you, Mr. Singh. Right, my pleasure, Cory. And Cory, please tell our listeners something about you, about your life, about your journey as an author. Um, I'm traditionally a teacher. I have taught English for a long time. I went to school in Jamaica up to um, up to college, pre-college. And then um, I went to America, to the United States, to do university. I didn't complete all of my university studies, but I came back to Jamaica and I continued teaching. I saw my journey as a writer. I'm, I don't think of myself as a writer. I've written a book, so I'm an author, but... I don't write like that, um, uh, like um, every day or regular basis. If I have something to write, I write, but I don't think of myself as a writer. Mm -hmm. The book is something that I've always wanted to do when I wrote the book. And I've written other books since, two others. But I still don't think of myself as a writer. I don't know if I'm making sense. No, absolutely, absolutely. Either it's there or it's not there. Writing simply does not mean that you are an author. It has to come from within you. And uh, it's perfectly fine if you don't consider yourself an author. Thank you so much for sharing about your life with us, Corey. And uh, hail up Wagwan. I hope uh, I have pronounced it correctly. Yes. Wonderful. Yes. So, Corey, tell us something about uh, Perfection is the Road, a hip-hop reggae. Okay. Um, that book... Is basically, I'm talking about happiness in that book, and uh, my I, my 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 aim in writing that book is that the reader will be happier after reading it than before he than he was before. Is a uh, that's my thing, happiness, and so I talk about happiness a lot in the book and the road to happiness, and um, I conceive of heaven the Christian heaven, in a way that I've never seen it conceived of before because I wrote about a world where there is no crime, no debt, no disease, no poverty. And um, that's my idea of heaven. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And um, I, the, the poems that I've written, because it's mainly poetry, it's mostly poetry, um, are based on the concepts behind that world that that was that world that was designed like that and um my philosophies that i, I wrote about in you know um at the introduction in a section called yes soldier is based at that too. it's all about how to be happy in life and how to um achieve balance for yourself and contentment for yourself that's what I'm basically trying to do in that book. Yeah. Wonderful. You know, uh, they say that heaven is a real place. The more we know about it, the more we should anticipate it. As I have often suggested, heaven is a prepared place for prepared people. Don Piper. That's mm -hmm. a, a quote by Don Piper. And yeah. uh, I think a place wherein there is no crime, no violence is indeed heaven. And uh, I believe we can have that place on earth itself. We don't need to go to a different world. Anywhere else. Yeah. 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 It's right here. If we want, mm -hmm. we can do it as humanity. Together, we can do it. Yeah. Uh, but it's here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it's wonderful. Yeah. Uh, so the book is available on Amazon in paperback yes. and ebook format. Okay, so mm. uh, Corey, when did you start writing? When is the earliest you remember that you wrote something? Uh -huh. Well, um, I, like I said, um, from an early age, I, I, I didn't like writing because when I wrote with a pencil or a pen, I, my hands hurt and um, I can't type. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so I didn't indulge in writing until late in my, like about when I was 15, late in my high school years. I wrote a book because I, a paper, because I just um, 
began studying economics and I wrote a paper called Theory of Fence, Theory of the Fence, this theory of the fence. Mm -hmm. In that paper, I postulated that um, poverty comes from wealth. The more people, the more wealth is, the more people get poor. Because I say, um, if the planet was not owned by some people, then everybody would have access to the resources. I know it sounds like a, like a communist thinking now, but that's what I was thinking and I wrote it down. Nobody wanted to read it though. <laughs> Nobody <laughs> paid attention. <laughs> Every revolutionary thinker uh, goes through that. And uh, <laughs> I know now people will read you. And, okay. Uh, you know, ironically, we are the only species, human beings are the only species who have to pay to live. Yes. Every, Every other species, you know, they are living for free and uh, mm -hmm. wherever they choose to live, it's us, you know, who have to pay. <laughs> <laughs> huh. I would love to read that paper. Do share uh, it with me in PDF if it's not published. Uh, yeah. Okay. okay. So uh, okay. Good, what was your source of inspiration earlier, uh, you know, for writing? You said that you started writing when you were 15. So that was quite early. So what was the inspiration then? Uh, is the inspiration same now or has it changed somehow? Well, um, I've been inspired by the Bible primarily. Um, other things inspire me, but I, um, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of a fanatic about the God of the Bible. Mm -hmm. You know, the God who made everything good. Yeah, that's important to me. You know, I mean, I don't tolerate any thinking that goes against it because I believe that very strongly. Everything is good. And it makes sense because God is good. And God made everything. So everything has to be good. So it's the hate and the intolerance that I don't like. That's the only thing that I don't um, like, hate. And... Um, yeah, that hasn't changed much since um, I've been a young person. Yes. You know, I'm, I'm still inspired by that thinking. <clears throat> Everything is good. And I think once people can wrap their minds around that and understand that tolerance, one of the virtues that we need to practice every day, tolerance, then, um, yeah, the world will be a better place. That's what I think. True. You know, hatred doesn't come from God. You know, God doesn't say that you have to hate this person, you have to hate that person. The hatred comes from human brain. You know, we humans, we create that hatred. Yeah. yeah God doesn't create. God mm -hmm. has given us the power to choose, you know, which yeah. none of the other species have, so to speak. You know, mm -hmm. we have the power to think. We have the power to choose mm -hmm. and uh, it's up to us what we do with that power. We can do good and mm -hmm. we can also do bad. Yeah. I think truly. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. uh, Corey, share a few of your favorite lines from your book or your stories. Let's have a poem. Well, your um, favorite, favorite poem from, from your book. Your favorite, my favorite poem? Yep. Okay. Um... <laughs> I don't know it by heart, all of it, but I know the first stanza. Can I do yeah. that? Yeah, just no a few problem. lines. Yeah. Okay. Um, it's called the new me. It's um from <clears throat> from um the section of the book called a condition of emotion, and um collaborated with Trisha Walters to write this poem, and it's very honest. That's why I like it. I always say it. Um, it's called the new me. Still, I am that I am and nothing else don't matter. I used to be a lamb, but now I'm much fatter. I kind of look like a ram, and my kids pit a patter about my feet. Still it's no surrender, no retreat. Still I'm not the person that I was before. I still have it heavy for the shore, and the roar of the lion turns me on at night. But now I bring my guns to the fight, and I burn bitches with holy light. That's what I remember. <laughs> I always say it. <laughs> <laughs> what is the most difficult part of the writing process, Cody? The most difficult part of the writing process? Yeah. Um, that was to get um, published. To, to get the money to um, pay for the self-publishing. I don't like begging for money. And um, 
I was asking a couple of friends and they refused, kind of sneeringly. Like, what are you going to do? A book? Black people don't write book. That's what they said. And I, I didn't like that. Finally, one of my friends helped me, though. Um, Mr. Bunny Lewin and my mother helped as well. You know, so that was my least favorite part of the publishing process. <laughs> to get the money to publish. Yes. Self-publishing costs money and uh, it costs even more money to market your book after you've published yes. it. You know, yes. merely publishing will not get the book in the limelight. So you've got to market it. You've got to spend more money to market the book. <laughs> right. Um, yeah. So, and what's your favorite part of publishing? You've told us about the least favorite part. What is the favorite part of your publishing? Well, you know, it's a creative control that I have, you know. I get to design the cover of the book, you know, I write about myself, you know, the whole thing of how the um, book manifests, you know, the, the, the content of the book manifests, you know, the editing and so on. I choose those people and it was a fun effort because I had the creative control. So that's, yeah, the whole, everything else I liked is just, I didn't like getting the money to pay for it. Yeah, yeah, I know self-publishing is tough. It's it's pretty expensive. It's pretty expensive. Yeah. Uh, so, Corey, what comes to you first, uh, the plot or the characters? Well, in this case, uh, I wrote the plot came first because the first thing I did was draw a map of the world that I was going to write about. It's called Ostani, and um, it's a perfect world in terms of what utopia you know how, how we think about utopia and you know utopia it's a utopian type world yeah and uh drawing the map and label different places the plot came to me and the uh, um, characters came to me afterwards okay. so the characters developed last okay so plot came first and characters developed later uh, and yeah. uh, how did you come up with the title of the book well, uh -huh. um, initially I wanted to name the book Goddess Tripolar mm -hmm. because of several reasons, including the fact that um, the doctors say that I'm bipolar and I'm, I've always resisted the idea. Uh, <laughs> and um, my friend, well, my mother didn't like the name Goddess Tripolar and she argued against that. Okay. And um, I wouldn't listen. I wouldn't listen. I, I decided that um, I'm going to name it like that. So she had a friend who was a Peace Corps worker who worked at her, the school that she was principal of. And she got her involved. Her name was Stacy Hines. And Stacy bought a book of numerology and calculated the name Goddess Tripolar and proved to me by that way that it was a disastrous title. Mm -hmm. So, you know, with that kind of evidence, you know, I didn't take any chances. I changed the name. The perfection is the road. So <laughs> that's how that happened. Okay. Uh, so I know deciding the title was a difficult part, but what uh, other part were really difficult for you to write, you know? Well, when you read the book, the book is divided into sections. There's a section there called Dialogue, where um, I write as two different people at the same time, Yard and Jabo. Um, it's called Dialogue because Yard and Jabo alternate in authoring the poems that happened in that, in that um, section. And it was difficult for me because I had to split myself into two people and give each person a style and... Um, a, a voice, a signature voice, so that when you read the poems, you can say, you know, after a while, you'll get used to it where you say, yeah, that's a Yard poem, that's a Jabba poem, that kind of thing. Yeah, Jabba is writing there and Yard is talking there because that's his style. You can identify them. So yeah. that was difficult for me. Um, You know, but yeah. yeah, that was the most difficult thing, the dialogue writing. I had to get used to that. Right. Right, Corey, I normally ask this and few authors love that part and few do not love that part. If your book was turned into a movie, who would play the characters? You know, hypothetically, which actors do you have in mind? The first thing I have to say is that I don't know the current people. I haven't watched TV seriously since about 2004. 
Wow. <laughs> so um, I'd have to go back further than that. The, the protagonist, I and I, the far right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, he could be played by Prince. The former, the artist formerly known as Prince. Yeah. Um, in his that purple rain role that he played, yeah, that's basically an I and I right there. Yeah, nice um, rest in peace, <laughs> Prince. <laughs> his mother, Lion Christa, could be played by Whoopi Goldberg. Um, Arnold Schwarzenegger could play I and I the um I and I the far as father, Sam Beaky. If Arnold <laughs> grew a beard. Yeah, he'd look perfect. Oh, I would love yeah. to see him with a beard. Pali, <laughs> uh, that's Ayana's best friend, could be played by Michael Jordan. Mm -hmm. And um, let me see, you know, um, Kame. Kame could be played by Sandra Bullock. Yeah, that's Ayana's first wife. And mm -hmm. um, his second wife, um, Atalia, could be played by Diana King. And um, Sasha. His last little concert in the end. The cute one. Could be played by Lisa Bonet. Yeah, <laughs> like that. <laughs> that is going to be a very colorful cast. I am yeah. sure the movie is going to be colorful. But you remember, this is your world. You yeah. can create your characters and you can select which actor is going to play which character. So this is your world. Mm. And, and I must say, this is a very colorful cast. <laughs> <laughs> Right. Uh, so what is the future for the characters, Corey? Uh, are you planning a sequel to the book? Yeah, I've written a couple of other stories. And um, I can write more. I, I just, I'm, I've not been in the situation to write recently. But I can. You right. know, and um, the, the characters are very... Resilient because they're basically mortals. You can write about them in the future. You can, you know, you can go on right. because, right? So, yeah, I mean, I think, like, like I said, you know, if it's not coming, then it doesn't come. You can't force mm. something out just because somebody has said, you know what? Oh, I like the book. Why don't you write a sequel? So, mm. writing is an art. You know, storytelling is an art. It doesn't work uh forcefully you know either it's there or either it's not there so yeah uh okay uh, Corey, what do you like to do when you are not writing <laughs> well it's a party um <laughs> i i make wine sometimes it's basically just living you know it's just experiencing life daily to, when i'm not writing i do other stuff i, I basically go about living I, i'm a farmer for one thing Mm -hmm. So I have my farm and um, I have my friends that I socialize with. Right. Corey, which writers have inspired you? Uh, and what do you read when you're sort of not writing or not doing anything else? What do you like to read? Oh, quite a few writers. Isaac Asimov, I must mention him first. He, mm -hmm. he started it. Um, I, I got a book when I was very young called Isaac Asimov's, Isaac Asimov's Science Fiction Treasury. And I was so impressed with that book. I kept it with me for a long time. Read the stories over and over. Um, and I used those names, those authors to um, search out other stories like Larry Niven, you know, and all those old classical guys, mm -hmm. um, science, science fiction guys. Then when I got older, I got into fantasy, like Piers and Tony, mm -hmm. David Eddins, the Belgarian series. The Malorian, yeah, David Eddins, Terry Lewis, um, people like that, and right. Robert Jordan, yeah. I'm very impressed with his book, The Wheel of Time series. Um, Heinlein also, and Frank Herbert have had the Dune series, I've had, yeah. Um, right. I've read them a lot. Um, I read a lot. I prefer to read than to write. So... You know, and I prefer fantasy and science fiction to any other writing. So I, I, I usually read those kind of stuff. Yeah. True, true. You know, as an author or as a writer, if you are not reading, then uh, there is something wrong. So mm -hmm. if you're an author or a writer, you need to read. And I think reading in general keeps our brain sharp. Mm -hmm. yeah. So reading is, I think, a very good habit. 
So, Corey, finally, what is that one message that you wish to give to young and aspiring authors? Let me say it, just like how I said it previously. Um, the only thing I'd say to young authors is no need to think outside of the box. I saw this. My cousin on Facebook shared this poster, and it shows a man floating out of a box. And I'm telling you that there's no limit to your imagination, and you have the power to create whatever you want to create. That's all you have to do. And, you know, the rest happens. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. You are your only limit. I think that's something uh, that young authors need to understand. There are no limits, but you yourself are your only limit. If you can beat yeah. yourself, then you can indeed write. Uh, thank you so much, Corey, uh, for spending time with us. Uh, that was a lovely conversation and I'm really jealous that you are in Jamaica and I'm in Canada. You are in a warm <laughs> place and I'm in a cold place. <laughs> <laughs> but really, it was lovely talking to you. Uh, thank you so much for taking time out. Thank you very much, Mr. Singh. My pleasure, Corey. Uh, so guys, that was uh, Corey Jobson for you from the colorful land of Jamaica, colorful and beautiful land of Jamaica. Uh, thank you so much, guys, for taking time out. I will get back to you with next episode. Till that time, take care and have a good day. Thank you. <laughs>